member of the, uh, the Association of Broadway Consultants. And many of you who are in a position where it's not necessarily a justice of the peace appropriate, not an exact fit perhaps for a minister because of situations within the family or relationships. This is a wonderful organization that fills the void and helps to move you from, I really am not sure what or who to refer you to, to I know exactly who to um, send you to. We also want to again thank Charlotte Ouellette and Celebrate USA for being our morning coffee sponsor. And without further ado, Charlotte Ouellette. We have Carol, Bethany, Lois, and I'm forgetting David, Mr. Hansen over there in Charming, and all of you who are really doing something that's amazing, especially in this time of history, where people are coming together and they're celebrating their lives. They have the opportunity to talk about what's important to them. They're able to express themselves. And all of you here, you came to a specific vocation where you're helping people celebrate their love. So I really thank all of you because we're all we're doing this together. I brought a group of celebrants with me because they wanted to meet with all of you as well. And all of you are basically true doors of love. It's an ancient concept that has been, it's been updated, and that's what you're doing. You're making their dreams come true. And one thing that I wanted to mention is because we have uh, Rhonda uh, Bassett Rivera. She, there was a wedding ceremony that she called us up, that she called us up, and there were these uh, two soldiers from Iraq, Marines, and uh, they were stationed there. They came in for a few days and didn't have much time to, to mess around, and they needed somebody to honor their traditions and also to talk about their story and their history. Let's face it. They didn't know they were going to live long enough to get married. That is heavy duty. This is the times that we're living in. And what we did was, Rhonda and also uh, Wilma Quantrill, who's going to talk about the ceremony and how it's personalized. We also have the video outside, but we're not going to show it here because we're going to uh, reenact it in a little bit. But anyways, what we have here is the Star Ledger piece. We've got the couple here, and we talk about Rhonda, and we talk about the celebrant that created a personalized wedding ceremony for this couple that rang true for all of them. Now, why, why is this important? Is PR important to bridal consultants? You bet your sweet petunia. <laughs> I know there's petunia bouquet, but anyway, it is very important. So when you're doing a ceremony, when you're interviewing a couple, and you're creating the whole thing, that's what we do. It's important to find out what their story is. And if you have a, a story that speaks, you may want to contact the Celebrant USA Foundation, me personally, and I will call either Peggy Lewis over, essentially, a, yeah, a Peggy Crowley of the Star Ledger, or some of our other people at all the other magazines. It's important that people know what you do so you, as troubadours of love, can make things happen for these couples that would like to. It's very important for you to get their permission. It may not always be called for, but that's something uh, you know that is also very important to you in your career. And it was such an honor. And we love Rhonda, and she really busted that day. <laughs> but um, another thing that I want to talk to you is about why is a celebrant different? Well, a celebrant's different because we sit down and talk to the couples. We ask them questions like, Tell us your story. What are your hopes and dreams for the future? What is it that you'd like to have the people in your family and friends knowing and feeling about you today? Is there something that you're wearing that's special? Do you want to give something to someone in your ceremony? What do you want to tell the groom? What does the groom want to say to the bride? This is the moment. Sure, the ring is important, but the real gem is what they have to say to one another. And those are the words that last forever, not just the diamonds. The diamonds are cold stone. 
It's the words, it's the tributes that we do with the families. And then what a celebrant does is something else. We have them group the ceremony. We make sure that their pronunciation of their family's names are accurate, whether they're Chinese, Hungarian, or they're from Zimbabwe. This is very, very important. You don't mess up the name. <laughs> and also what we do is we give a beautiful copy of the ceremony to the couples. This is what we do for weddings, baby names, renewal of vows, engagements. We do all different kinds of events. So we want to make sure that you know that. And why are cultural weddings important? This is what we're going to do today. These are weddings that we're going to have uh, Jerry Fierce, who is a New York and New Jersey wedding celebrant, come up and do a reenactment of the ceremony. And we're going to pick some lucky bride and groom from the audience to wear our 1930s top hat. And our, uh, basically the veil is a, uh, a uh, communion veil. <laughs> I couldn't get it to the other kind. So, and also we have... Uh, Wilma Quantrill, who is the wedding celebrant, she's from Keyport, uh, New Jersey, and Jerry and Wilma actually also part of our faculty, because we are an institute. We train people to become celebrants, and celebrants are non-denominational ministers, so if a couple is Buddhist and Jewish, where do you go? You come to us because we know their cultural, ritual, symbol, we know comparative religious rites of passage, all these kinds of things that are very important. So we come with a knowledge base. We're trained. We're certified. That's what a celebrant is. And we have celebrants from New Jersey, because you're a northeastern regional bridal consultants and event consultants. We have 200 and more celebrants throughout North America and Canada. And uh, going back, we started in Australia 30 years ago, where 85% of the wedding ceremonies are officiated by uh, and they also are in the funeral and memorial and uh, celebration of life celebrants as well. And they do 90% of the funerals and memorials. So they're a big part of the culture. We brought this to the United States six years ago. It happened right around 9-11. And I have to tell you, we, this is where America, with our different cultures that you're going to see today, with our different languages, with our children that we're adopting from all over the world. They're coming here to this great country. So that's why cultural ceremonies are very important. And with that, no further ado, as uh, Lois had said, uh, do and don't, I do's, with more I do's, is Jerry Fierce, uh, New Jersey, New York wedding celebrant, who's going to come up and do his thing. Come on up. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I think you can hear me. I'm an actor, so I have a pretty good voice. Um, would you be my bride? Please. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you. I,
Now, because we live in the New York, Philadelphia, New Jersey metro area, we have people from all over the world, as Charlotte said. Our job is not to have people walk out going, oh, that was different. Our job is to have people walk out going, that was so warm, inclusive, and just who they are. So you have to listen, go through an interview process, you have to listen and create something that works for the client. And that means not having an imposition of, oh, this is the way I do it. Instead, what you do is you guide them. So you say, you know, if your family is Catholic, they want something that's going to give them something that they say, oh yes, I recognize that. It's not exactly how father would have done it, but I understand that. And if your family is Hindu, you want to give them something that they'll understand, right? So that everybody walks out feeling like they've been cued to the kind of ritual that makes them realize that this is a real wedding. Not just a um, new age ceremony, right? It's not, it's, we, we are based, and that's why you have to be certified by the Self Ritual SA Foundation, because you have to go through a training course in ritual and folklore and tradition and understand how the writing process carries people through the journey that gives it heart and soul. So the, I have a little example, a very short example, of a ceremony that I did with a um, South Asian bride from India and a uh, Christian surfer. <laughs> <laughs> he, really, he, really wasn't a, he really wasn't a surfer, but he was from La Jolla. And, um, and, um, and they met in a bar um, in San Diego, in San Diego, and as they told me their story, they said, but don't mention that. So instead, we just mentioned that they met unexpectedly. Um, so I'm going to give you this little example. Uh, there's a flower ceremony included, you're going to present a flower, so I'll instruct you. And, uh, and you'll get a sense of the way that Hindu-Christian ceremonies were put together to reflect a little bit of the story of this particular couple. So we gather today to celebrate the love and union of Anjali and Terence, who bring to each other the unique treasures of their families and their traditions as they create a new household. Uh, ap apropos of what I'm doing, this is essentially how I would be set up. I'm like a priest or a rabbi who would be facing out with the couple giving their backs to the guests. I always have to get the couple face out for better photographs, and also because I'm not the important person in the ceremony, they are. And I stand usually beside them near the, the best band. Um, on the groom's shoulder. Uh, we gather today to celebrate the love and union of this couple. Their destiny was to find each other across oceans and continents, propelled by love. We come here from the four corners of the world as witness to this love. Let the blessings of all of our traditions flow upon this loving couple from all directions of the continent. The sacred east, where the flaming sun arises, let your love be a light and inspiration to yourselves in the world. The sacred south, where the earth offers her abundance, let your love support our planting and harvesting, both as individuals and as couples. May all your days be blessed with love. The sacred west, where the noble sun sets, let your love be a comfort to all your disappointments, a mirror to all your hopes. The sacred north, where the soul's compass finds its home. Let your love be a guide to your passion and powers and your progress in the world. May all your years be blessed with love. These four corners of the world are the sacred directions of love. May you be held in their center, now and for the rest of your life together, and for a long time to come. And may all your dreams come true. Karen. Would you take Anjali's hands and hold them palm up in yours? <laughs> These are the hands young and vibrant with 
love that reach out to you on your wedding day as she gives you her pledge to accept your ring. These are the hands that will hold you in joy, excitement, and hope. These are the hands that will hold your children in tender love, soothing their hurts and relieving themselves of worry when trouble comes. These are the hands that will hold your face and wipe tears from your eyes. The hands that will comfort and hold you when fear or grief rack your mind. These hands will touch you with wonder and awe that you would cry for her. They will caress you for a lifetime. Anjali, would you please take Terence's hand on top of yours so you may see the gift they are to you? And these are the hands, young and strong, and vibrant of love that hold yours on your wedding day. I promise to love you all the days of this life. These are the hands that will hold your children in tender love, soothing their hurts, bringing themselves with worry when trouble comes. These are the hands that will comfort you in illness and hold you in fear and pain rack your mind. These hands will touch you in wonder and awe that you would cry for him. These hands will caress you for a lifetime. Each member of your wedding party carries a rose as a symbol of your love. Roses are nourished by all the community and environment in which they grow. So it is with your love that it has grown and flourished with the nourishment of your friends and your family. But love is delicate and love is fragile. And you must create a shelter in which life's storms and droughts will leave your love intact and always grow. Clap hands. And these four hands will be your armor and shield. They will reach out to each other and unite and spread your love and care for all they touch. I ask each of your wedding party to place their roses in your hands. Please open your hands to receive them.
purport to be a religious figure. I want to give them what they want and create the ceremony of their dreams, but not to pretend that I'm something I'm not. I'm not, although I have been called rabbi on many occasions. <laughs> <laughs> Never a father, though. So, um, my, my, my level of discomfort um, caused me to create this, this short ritual with the regular because they have been wearing the so this, this works well for any ceremony, but it's especially good for those who have already been legally married or a new law, or even if they're exchanging rings that have been worn by um, their grandparents or something like that. So, um, and I have rides to really go to town on how to present the rings. Um, I like to pass them together with little raffia or small ribbon. They um, often really get into it and big, big, fancy, elaborate, um, Decals for their rings um, that reflect either a cultural uh, or family um, ethnic element. Um, okay, so, um, we're here today to celebrate the love of Eileen and Jan. We start today by taking a moment to reflect in gratitude that we have all arrived safely to share in this moment of love. We come here today with all the joy in our hearts and all of our hopes for their future. They have found peace in each other's hearts and the sometimes loud and cluttered world. Their commitment to each other is a testament to their faith and their hopes for the future. They are blessed to be surrounded by all of you, their family and friends. And this occasion would not be complete without you. And through our thoughts and our wishes for this couple, we make of this space a holy place and celebrate the profound and beautiful expression of love. Finally, and Jan, you, their dear family and friends, are the ceremony. And they might not be having this celebration if not for you. So for all you have done and all you mean to them, as they offer their deepest and most sincere thanks. You can see here an expression of Jan and Eileen's love and commitment to each other, their wedding ring. They have worn them for a few years now, but today these rings take on a new meaning. Jan and Eileen will exchange these rings before all of you as they publicly declare their love. But they feel your presence so strongly in their lives that they want you all to become a very real and lasting part of this ceremony and of their lives together. They would like each of you to take these rings in your hands and for a brief moment offer onto these rings and to this couple your blessings, your prayers, your deepest hopes and dreams for them. The rings will travel through the crowd and will be a vessel of your wishes and prayers. I will start by making my wish, and then I will hand it to the best man. I should have the same thing here. Later in the ceremony, Eileen and Jan will exchange these rings. They will wear them every day, not only as a reminder of their love for each other, but of yours for them and theirs for you. I continue with the ceremony. Everyone serves up. Make the wish or offer the prayer onto the ring, and they kind of go through. As I sneak in, on obviously early in the ceremony, and then we go through. Uh, and everybody, I've never lost the ring. <laughs>
disenfranchised or you know marginalized by society for whatever reason. That is something we believe that celebrates our human rights activists. We spell rights both ways, R-I-G-H-T and also R-I-T-E. So, and uh, what we also do is we talk with you as private consultants. So you have the shot sheet. You know who's going to be reading. You know the events that are going to be taking place. And our ceremonies don't go on forever. There is a lamp to a ceremony because usually the reception side also wants to serve the food. <laughs> so these are things that we work along in tandem with you and we dovetail with you. And that way the couple knows what's going on, you know what's going on, everything works like clockwork. Believe me, just ask Rhonda. So now we ask Wilma to come on up on trail. She's from the Keyport area and we're very happy to have her do her ritual today that was in uh, featured the Star Ledger for that lovely, lovely uh, copy of couple that are Marines, and they're there today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to find uh, my couple's name is Karina and Kim, and Charlotte has already told you about their way. You can see a lot of pictures of it. Uh, can I have a Karina? Would anybody like to follow here?
The bride's acceptance of the coin is a sign of her trust in her former, in her future husband and the promise to care for him. The Christian influence is evident in the number 13. It represents Christ and his 12 apostles. And of course, the Spanish tradition is a Roman Catholic tradition. The couple's love and trust in each other reflect God's love for them. Today's couple embrace life and face the world together in a more mutually supportive way than ever before. So, the wedding coins have come to symbolize the couple's commitment to mutually contributing to their well-being. This also extends to their children, the family, and the community. The ritual we will demonstrate is from a wedding ceremony, as I said, that was um, uh, of two uh, Marines who were deployed in Iraq uh, named Karina and Tim. Uh, fortunately, they had, as Charlotte said, they had um, Rhonda Bass Rivera for their product consultant, and I was able to work with her, and it was a wonderful experience. And I very, very, very much appreciate what all of you do, because I thought it was awesome. I just couldn't believe how much she had done to prepare for these two who had no way of doing any of this preparation themselves. But when they got there, Tim was only there the night before at the rehearsal. Everything was in place. Um, it was amazing. Thank you, Rhonda. <laughs> First, Rhonda. Thank you. Frida's family was from Colombia, South, South America, and Tim was from Kentucky. The ritual comes from her Hispanic heritage. Just if you'd like to, I'll show you some pictures too. I don't, I don't want to touch this here. <laughs> Drama. Here they are at their teeth. Thank you. And the wedding. These are photos that were taken by the Star Ledger photographer.
12 points which Karina and Tim will pass between them, represent Jesus and the 12 disciples. They have special meaning for Karina and Tim, as they not only represent God's blessing of their marriage, but their well-being as husband and wife. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask you to bless Karina and Tim as we receive these points one from the other. May they be for them a sign of mutual support and care. Bless Karina and Tim that their love may be that which binds them together in trust and confidence. Amen. Very short ritual, and, it, and following that ritual, there was another ritual of the time of the non, which is also very lovely. Um, anyway, that's our ritual for coming in. We want to thank all the brides and grooms today and hope that their spouses or their loved ones don't take offense. <laughs> Of course, your mom's wearing it. Is it legally binding, Mama? Did we marry them? Are we a bigger thing in the room? Thank you, Mom. Now, I'm going to bring out the fellows that were part of this event. And if you have any questions, or I don't know if we're running a little late, Lois, whatever you'd like to do. So, uh, and Jerry, come on up. And if you have any questions, we're here for you. I can hear some stomachs growling. Shoes. Yes. The only thing I would say is that I've seen the drawings that are being done, mm-hmm. and I know you're saying large weddings. I have a large wedding on October 150, so instead of passing the drawings around 150 in, in a, let's just say, a very local Quaker house that has the event mm-hmm. hold it, or making me nervous if they're passing the rings, what they do is they have their media crowd party close to friends and mm-hmm. their family right. around. And then everyone else walks. Yeah, I have a wedding of 180 where yeah. I want to do this. And it's a big enough family that it will seem right. like enough to have you know, so right. not, right. not all 150. And then right. the last thing we saw when I said was, you know, as we see back and forth, now we'll be all joined right. to do a final mm-hmm. process. And it actually looks very well. We do very variations to yeah. a lot of different things, but the bottom line is, the approval from the bride and groom. We do Disney squat and they don't. Like we've done the ceremony where, you know, someone from the family might come over, oh, we think this should, no, no, no. We talk to the bride. We all know this. And if that's what the bride wants, well, that's what she gets. <laughs> so it's very important that you know, they're our client. But so we have different variations. In fact, there was a couple that Jerry did a ceremony for that they met dancing. They were in dancing, so we're, we're talking about different cultural rituals, but sometimes it's the hobby or how they meet. So they all waltzed in at a dance studio, and we have the video. They and had, then, they yeah. came to me with the idea. I did not suggest to them at all. I said, I can do what it says. They came to me, they had already booked the ballroom. <laughs> and, uh, and so they actually ended the ceremony with the whole dance exhibition. And um, it was quite an extraordinary image. So everything from dance ceremonies to ceremonies that are really quite spiritual. And actually, we've even had situations where the bride has said to us, Toby is going to be the ring bearer. Toby was the dog. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, those are things that we're open to. Of course, it has to be okay with the site. Of course, we're talking to the bridal consultant here. <laughs> All those kinds of things are really important. Go right ahead if you have any questions. 
How many of you are actually, oh, I see a question. I'm just curious, can the
where I came in a down below, in Columbia. So we brought her and she came off the hospital. And uh, she came into the off the down below with her family and they brought her in. And uh, it was interesting because we did it bilingual. We had her brother come and do half the vows in Spanish, kind of the vows in English had been repeated. And we also had the rabbi come. And he was able to do a little blessing and read something he had to be a Spanish major. So he read something from Roca, everybody clapped. It was in the whole part of there with a thousand people. Folks are going back and forth. It was really a showstopper and it meant so much. And she was wearing a pearl necklace, necklace that the grandmother, her name was Pearl, and it was hers. So we mentioned that. And she had friends that came from different countries. And somebody did a little uh, poem in the French. So, and we, you know, of course we kept it short, but it was so wonderful to bring in the religious aspect of the people that were important to them, their family members and their heritage, and to give thanks to their ancestors that were right there. So that's what we do. We're inclusive. Thank you all very much. Good afternoon. For those of you who don't know, I'm Tony.